Hello everybody, my name is Michael and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks interesting to you, please carry on and watch the video. And also, just one more thing before we go. Please, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. But with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so what we're going to do with our centaur here that we're painting up is we're going to give him a tan skin tone. So I'm going to start with Burnt Flesh to do this, which is a nice uh, deep dark skin tone. Good for that base coat that we want here. And of course too, I just mentioned that I've given him a Xenothor Highlight Prime as well, which is going starting with a black and then coming over with a white over top. So to pick, pick out all those shadows and those highlights nice and easily and it's a good guide for us while we're painting along as well to keep that in mind while we're painting. And, and as you can see, all we're doing here is painting up the skin anywhere we can see the skin. But of course, since he is a centaur, we're leaving out that horse body as well. So just, just the skin here. And you see there's a lot of little areas to go over here and he has awesomely nice defined muscle features as well on this minute. Just so really cool to paint up here. Then once we have that base skin toned down, we're going to come in with a lighter colour and this is going to be some base flesh, which is a lighter colour. And we're going to be using this on our highlighted areas, or I should say more the, the higher points of the areas here. We're going to be filling them in quite uh, strongly. And you can see since there is a nice defined uh, muscle areas, it's nice and easy to pick them out. That's why I wanted to go with this... Um, more strong highlighted approach with this model because I just really like the the sculpting on the muscles here they really really stick out so I want to try and emphasize them as much as I could with really painting them all up and giving them their own real good uh, highlight layers on there so you can really see them when they pop out once we've finished all the skinny areas you'll see that it's going to really pop out on the model. Then once we've had that complete, we're going to come in with a, one more highlight, and this is going to be with Tanned Flesh. And this, of course, is going to be even smaller again, just sort of really dotting it on there in high points. Now, I'm going with sort of real thick uh, placement of these. Uh, not thick as in I'm glooping it on, but I'm really making sure that the high points really, really stand out. I want to have these muscles super, super defined and really pop out on the table. Uh, it's going to be a little like probably chunky looking to what my usual style is where you don't see uh, the highlights quite as much but I wanted to have it really popped out since it's super emphasized and since it'll be standing back on the table it's going to make it even pop out even more from a distance that's why I'm going with this here and as you can see just slightly going inside the areas that we did with those highlights as well to make them stand out even more. Then once we have all those highlight layers done, we're going to come in now with some flesh wash. And this of course is the wash to be placing over the whole areas. Now, the reason why I'm doing this now, rather than uh, doing the base layer, then doing a wash, then placing the highlights over top, is I wanted to have them all blend in a little bit. So I'm going with a little bit more of a chunkier highlight uh, style here. And I wanted to have them just blend in a little bit more, whereas they would pop out way, way more if we had it done it the other way around, placing the wash over, then doing the highlights. So it's up to you how you want to do this here. I just wanted to have them just a little bit blended in a bit more to see if I could get nice poppy highlights while still having it just blended in just slightly enough where uh, it looks like it's a bit more natural, more like a glazed over sort of thing. Um, so hopefully it comes out well. As, as you can see, I can't tell at this point when I'm painting it up, but you know definitely as we go along that as how it's going to come out and look. So uh, we do get the result that I was hopefully after and that was really what i was trying to go for and have this nice sort of real popping highlight style but have it just blended in enough that you can see that it's uh, sort of merged together from a, a distance on the table then once we have that skin complete what we're going to do is start moving on to the actual horse body itself i'm going to come in with some mahogany brown to do this and this is going to be a good nice overall coverage now i'm not going to focus so much on the uh, highlights and stuff on the horse Part, I'm just going to keep this pretty basic and simple uh, just to help it contrast so you, you we're focusing more on the actual body of and the, the head portion and you know the human side of the centaur itself rather than the, the horse part so I'm not going to worry too much about uh, highlights and stuff here I just want a good nice base overall coverage but keeping it still thin enough so we can see some of those uh, highlights and shadows from the Zenithal Prime as well but also giving it enough so we've got that good overall coverage. Then once we have that complete what I'm going to be doing is coming in with smoke 
and what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be using it for the handles of our weapons here so he's got two weapons in his hands he's got the axe in one hand and the nice big spear in the other now uh, what just one thing with smoke it's a sort of a thinnish paint it's very similar to a contrast paint actually so just keep that in mind if you're using the same paint as me but remember any brown is what you want here i'm just going with something a lot darker than what we have on our horse body so it stands out that little bit more then once we have that complete we're going to come in now with some oak brown and what we're going to be doing with our oak brown is i'm actually going to be using it to be painting up our straps and our harnesses that we have on our horse here but as you'll see in the very next step uh, I didn't actually end up by liking the color on here I thought it was too samey samey uh, with the other brown on the horse already so I actually end up by scrapping that and using another color so just keep that in mind if you're painting up things like this that it's okay to change your mind when you've put a bit of paint on it and you're not happy with it you can easily just wait for it to dry and paint over it again so then now here I am with the black grey and this is the colour that I end up by going for with the straps and harnesses on here. And as you can see that pops out so much better on the actual model, especially when we're going to be playing this from a distance where if we had to kept it with that oak brown there it would have been very very similar and hard to pick out from the model from a distance on the table. And you can see by just giving it that black grey or even a black would make it stand out so much more and we can really get a good defined piece of the model from a distance. Then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing is coming in with some deck tan and what I'm going to be doing with this deck tan here is I'm just going to be using it to add some uh, socks onto our horse here. So I wanted to make the horse, I should say the horse part of the center, not a horse as it's a separate animal. Um, and I'm just painting on a couple of socks here just uh, randomly, I'm going to be doing it on opposite feet here just to give it a little bit more visual interest than just painting the horse brown so just taking some inspiration from real life horses looking at some pictures see how their um, patterning on their fur is to get some inspiration and sort of liven up your model just a little bit more especially on centaurs where people have a very uh, habit I guess the very main habit of just painting them the brown like a usual horse um, to try to keep it generic but they end up by just painting the same brown body over and over again instead of giving them like an actual horse colored body or, or following other fur patterns that can really make you appreciate uh, a slightly different paint job on a model so just little things like that can help separate it out from your standard models of these types then once we have that complete what I'm going to be doing now is coming in with some matte black and we're just going to be using this for the shoes of our horse and for the tail of our horse as well, part of the centaur. I guess it's getting confusing, I'm even confusing myself as I'm saying this, but yes, the horse part of the minotaur, not even a minotaur, the horse part of the centaur, sorry, uh, we're gonna be using black to do the, the hooves and the hair as well. So don't be afraid to go with any color you want here, it's gonna go with black, something to stand out a bit on there as well. So that's a key thing is we just want a color that's gonna really help stand it out so you can really see these parts from the distance. Then once we have that complete, what I'm going to be doing is coming in with some dark green. And what I'm actually going to be doing with this, I'm going to be using it for the saddle-like armor that our centaur has on him. Now, I'm going with green here, because to me, it, it just at first glance with the, the sculpting on this, is it actually looks sort of like a crocodile skin to me. So that's what I sort of wanted to go with here. Uh, totally up to you what you want to do with here if you're painting up this miniature, um, giving it just sort of a leathery color. But to me, it really did look like uh, crocodile scales. And I thought, hey, that's cool and unique it adds another color to the model as well because like I said we want to try and avoid that very samey sameness which is why I went with a different color on the uh, belts and the buckles and stuff is to really help separate out these colors and really give it a unique look on the table especially from a distance with all these colors and really help make it an eye-catching piece then once we have that armor picked out what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be coming on some Agrax Earthshade and what I'm going to be doing this of course is the nice simple thing of giving everything a wash now this is going to be everything that I've painted up so far so that's the uh, the straps on the center the the horse body itself the the hair and the fur and of course the uh, leather armor as well I'll give it that nice uh, brownie appearance I wanted to make it sort of a little bit worn in armor and just sort of dirty it up just a little bit and of course give it a nice good thick liberal coating of the wash all over there making sure that it's not pulling anywhere you don't want it to especially on that horse body since there are some nice big open flat areas as well so just be careful of that and keep an eye on it as it's drying <music> 
then once we have that wash completely dry you can see that we've got the detail we want in there and that's quite good and really helps liven it up a bit but now we want to be moving on to some gunmetal and this is our silver color so any silver colors we're going to do here i'm just going with a gunmetal one to keep it nice and dark so we can highlight it up and i'm just going to be placing this just on a couple of small parts of the actual model itself so i'm actually just going to be just doing the blade of the axe and just the tip of the spear there because i want to go with a different color for the uh, armor and the filigree on the weapons are there as well so just nice two small areas to do this then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some weapon bronze and this is what i'm going to be using for the armor and the decorative elements on our piece so uh, since the centaur is based on greek mythology and it comes from the reaper bones 5 kickstarter and the greek expansion i wanted to uh, sort of uh, give a nod to that with the uh, sort of bronze age weaponry and armor and that that they had back then so that's why i'm going with the weapon bronze here for this and it's also going to be a nice uh, different color to add to the model itself as well because like i said i wanted to have it sort of a little bit more vibrant than i would usually uh, do things like this in my miniature just to add in a little bit of flair on the tabletop when i'm using this and as you can see i'm going around picking out the detail with just the side of the tip of the brush not the actual tip itself so we don't damage that tip and also so we can just carefully get it along and pick out those sort of filigreed areas especially on that armor design in there as well making sure that we get into those nooks and crannies since there is a lot of detail on there then once we have that complete what i'm going to be doing now is coming in with some deck tan once again and i'm just going to be using this just for a, a couple of areas on the model and that is going to be for our horns on our helmet here and as well as that he also has some little bits of like tufts of fur on his gauntlets as well uh, just peeking out from there so i want to be grabbing those two and as you can see with our horns we just want to give them a nice good overall coating and it's going to really help uh, make them look a bit more horn like once we apply a wash to them so don't forget to do that especially with these little tufts on the gauntlets too then once we have that complete what i'm going to be doing now is coming in with some ash gray and i'm going to be using this for the hair of our centaur i want to go with a nice sort of gray beard and gray flowing hair just to add something a little bit different and like i said i want to have it a little bit more vibrant than i usually would which is i would have gone with a brown or a black hair so just something to make it a little bit different and also give him a little bit of personality he looks like he's an old veteran looking centaur as well so being careful not to get it over any of the paint job that we've done already because it's going to be a bit of a pain to tidy up so practice your brush control here Then once we have that picked out, I'm going to come in with a nice big bold color here and that's going to be using some of my fist and red to do this. And I'm going to be going for the uh, crest and like show offness of his helmet here, really getting that nice color in there. And as you can see, it immediately sticks out on the miniature. As well as that, I'm also going to be using it for the handle of his uh, X on his hand here as well, just to give him a little bit more color to there as well. And you can see that immediately that's brightened the whole miniature way up and really added in a nice nice visual eye-catching piece to our paint job here then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with a wash and we're going to be using seraphim sepia this is only going to be for a couple of places on the model and that is going to be for our horned area as well as a little bit of tufts of fur that he has on his gauntlets as well so nice and quick here just really getting that nice horn color to eventually show up so we can separate it out from the other areas we place our deck tan then once we have that completed what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some dark tone and this is a black wash so known oil would also work here and what we're going to be doing is placing this over the entirety of the armor as well as our uh, head crest that we have on here and our hair of our miniature as well which is you know his facial hair and his hair flowing out the back as well giving it a good overall coat so that wash really seeps into that nice filigree detail onto the weapons especially Then once we have that completely dry we can come into some highlighting now so that's again coming back in with our weapon bronze and just picking out those raised details now this is of course where you want to be using the very edge of your brush slash the tip to really pick out those nice filigree details on that armor especially you can see some nice intricate details and we want to be picking those out sort of like in a dry brushing motion over top just very lightly picking them out maybe a couple of layers of paint just to really get them to pop out there and being very careful as 
you know, so it's great practice for your sort of edge highlighting here on the miniature with so much intricate detail. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some shining silver. This is a very, very bright silver, and we're going to be using this for the edges of our weapons here. So the spear that he has on his hand, we're going to be grabbing that nice shiny uh, tip of it and really picking out the edges along, as well as the axe handle as well. We want to be doing that too, really giving it a nice shiny, shiny highlight since it's going to be like coming at you and we want it glinting off the sun and shining silver is going to be great against our uh, washed uh, gun color that we have here our nice sort of dark silver that we've been using it's a great contrast and it really makes everything look nice and shiny then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing is coming back in with our Mephisto in red and we're going to be using it to of course do the highlights of our red areas and as you can see it's just a matter of coming in and reapplying them in a nice edge highlighting motion especially on the side of our head crest slash headdress that we have here really making sure that we pick out those highlighted strands and you can see I'm sort of going over it in like a dry brushing motion so it keeps the recesses nice and shaded but really picks out those high points of the highlights and then once you've done that we've completed our miniature so let's move on to some of those nice glamour shots and see how it came out in the end. And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up our Centaur from Reaper Miniatures. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or use this video as some inspiration in painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.